Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to some. I'm Karen Berger, and I'd like to welcome you to the October CASAS National News and Updates webinar. Uh, I would just like to point out a couple of features of the webinar. Your phones and computers, as you probably already noticed, are muted. We ask that you use the Q&A to ask questions about the presentations and use the chat for technical difficulties. We will, all, we will also use the chat to post links for you. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our news and updates website. Here's a little bit closer look at some of your controls at the bottom of your screen. You can enable closed captions by clicking on that CC button. Um, next over is the Q&A, which I said we asked you to use this for questions about content and presentations and specific questions for the presenters. We would like you to reserve the chat only for technical issues. And as I said, we will be putting uh, links in there for you at different times during the webinar. And finally, if you look at that little microphone on the bottom left of your screen, if you click the up arrow, you can adjust your volume uh, so you can hear better. And again, thanks so much for joining us today. And I'm going to hand it over to Janice Farah. Thanks, Karen. Let's take a look at the agenda. First up, we have Linda will be presenting a little bit about the test development updates, which are very exciting. Then uh, Karen will be sharing about field testing and research studies. Then we're going to step back and take a look at something I think a lot of agencies are interested in pursuing, which is the Digital Equity Act and the grants that are associated with this act. We welcome our guest speaker today, Mr. Kim Jones from Oakland, who will be sharing slides about his uh, very special celebration his agency marked uh, the beginning of October. Also, we have Martha from Casa Tech Support, who will be sharing uh, some tips about e-tests, our flagship software product, tips about the testing sessions. Then we'll close with an update from the training group and Casa's News. So without further ado, Ms. Linda Taylor. Hi, everyone. Glad you could join us today. Uh, we do have some news for you. Uh, some things have changed since the last webinar. One of them is that um, the Math Goals series, the current Math Goals series, has been extended another year. Uh, before it was to expire in March of 2023, but now it has an extra year up till 2024. And we are proud to announce that we have submitted for NRS approval uh, the new Math Goals 2 series. Uh, we did that just on October 1st. Uh, you all probably wonder when we're going to hear back about it. And um, basically, we don't really know. It could be anywhere between January and May of 2023. But as soon as we hear, we will certainly let you know. As far as ESL is concerned, uh, the life and work reading and the life and work listening were also extended a year uh, from 2023 to 2024. So you have one more year to use those tests. Basically what this does is give you um, uh, hopefully a transition time uh, because we've submitted our new series, which is called STEPS. And I'm gonna tell you that acronym in a sec. Uh, so we submitted those two test series on October 1st as well, just now. And similarly, we expect to hear back uh, hopefully in early 2023. But in order to make the transition, you will have an extra year uh, to use the life and work reading and listening if you want, uh, and then transition into the new series after that. So we will again keep you posted as soon as we hear anything. Our new series, uh, it's Reading Steps and Listening Steps. This is for ESL. Steps stands for Student Test of English Progress and Success. Now, one of the things that's different about the new series, both for reading and listening, is that instead of four levels, A through D, there are five levels, A through E. They still align to the NRS levels one through six. And we, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you in a minute more about that. Uh, there are two forms per level, alternate forms for each of those test series. One of the things I think is gonna make a lot of people happy who are using paper still is that um, in addition uh, to the um, uh, 
appraisal on ETESM paper, actually what should have been read here is that the locator now is going to be not only on ETES, but also on paper. So that's something that we think will uh, help you go faster if you're doing the uh, paper testing, because really uh, we found that the locator works nearly as well as the appraisal. So um, to, it does the job to get the student in the correct pre-test form and takes less time. The new ESL series are aligned to the ELP, the English Language Proficiency Standards. That means that there's an increased focus on content standards, that is um, the basic skills content standards that are in the ELP standards. And uh, we still are in our functional life skills context that are relevant for our adult learners. Uh, and the competencies will still be uh, there, but really what we're measuring primarily is the student's ability to um, work within the content standards and, and perform those skills. Uh, if you are already familiar with our reading goal series for ABE, you will see that uh, there are similar item types in the reading step series because the ELP standards are aligned to the college and career readiness standards and the reading goal series is also aligned to the college and career readiness standards. So um, in creating the new reading step series, we there is a similarity to our reading goals in terms of the item, item types. So um, that's uh, something that will already be familiar to those of you using CASAS for ABE. Now here's a chart that will give you an idea of the design of all of the, uh, of the STEP series, uh, actually as well as the new math series. So the, um, the CASAS test level, as I mentioned, it's not only up to D, but also up to E. And it's a simpler design where the NRS levels uh, one and two are aligned to level A. So there's only two NRS levels for each CASAS level. You may know these in ESL as beginning ESL literacy and low beginning, that's NRS one and two, but your program may call them something different. Many program, those are the, the uh, octate names for those levels. Our CASAS level B test forms are covering, you can see there's an overlap here where, uh, and this was true in the previous, in all of our previous series, there's overlap. So level A uh, covers one and two, level B picks up and covers level two and adds three. Um, then level C, so this would be low beginning and high beginning ESL. Level C goes uh, three and four and so on up to level six advanced ESL. Another uh, thing that's different uh, this time about the listening only uh, because we have a listening item types and this uh, chart compares the life and work listening item types to the new listening steps item types. So what's similar completely is the photo items that we had in uh, life and work listening and listening steps. And those are only at level A and they do have a test booklet if you're using paper. They're, um, uh, vocabulary questions. And then uh, the next line item type where there's a conversation and the student has to choose the appropriate next line uh, at, at the end of the conversation they hear is the same, but we changed the name of it uh, to next response, but it's still the same item type exactly. Now for comprehension question, this is also something that was there in life and work listening. And we have that same item type in listening steps. However, as I mentioned before, the types of questions are going to be different because they're aligned to the ELP standards. That is the focus of these questions. So in addition to asking about things like locating detail, finding the main idea, these are, are some of the ELP standards that we test, point, author's point of view or the speaker's point of view in the case of listening, but also um, what's very prevalent in the ELP standards is the uh, skill of summarizing. And so um, this is uh, going to be in the format of a comprehension question, but just so you know, and, and we'll be sharing very soon uh, some sample test questions for both the reading steps and the listening steps. So you'll be able to see uh, some sample items and, 
what's important really is to know the um, the question frames for these. What what kind of prompts are we using, and what language are we using to ask these questions? So, for example, in the comprehension questions that focus on a summary, uh, we have a we always use the same question, and that's something that you could prepare your students for would be really great to do because that way they'll understand what a summary is and they'll know when they're being asked for a summary from the way the question is phrased. So uh, we, as soon as we're going to be very soon posting these on the CASAS website, uh, as well as other information about the new series, we'll, we'll put that in the what's new uh, in, uh, on the homepage so you'll be able to easily get to it. Now, just one thing also, we've simplified the number of uh, listening item types so before uh, and currently now in the life and work listening series that you're using, we had the which is correct item type, but uh, we did not carry that over into listening steps. For our new math goals two series, uh, we also have five test levels, A to E. And uh, actually at the, in the current math goals, we only have two test levels. So this is going to be a more robust coverage of content. Uh, in math goals two, with two alternate forms uh, for each test level. Um, again, we have uh, new locators on paper, in addition to being on e-tests. We still have the appraisals if you prefer to use them for both e-tests and paper. The locators are shorter. Uh, I think it's 15 to 20 minutes. So that will save you some time and do the job. Uh, the math goals two uh, series is just like math goals aligned to the CCR math standards and has very similar um, item types as math goals. The content is the same, but there's more of it because there's five levels. Um, we are preparing and, and very soon we'll be able to uh, post detailed test blueprints uh, with the content alignment for both the uh, reading steps, listening steps and math goals too. Um, these test blueprints will be similar to the ones we already have online for the goal series test, so uh, they'll be familiar. So please stay tuned for uh, those uh, and you'll be able to see them. And we'll be covering more aspects of these new series in upcoming webinars. So now I'd like to hand it over to Karen Berger, who's gonna to talk to you about research studies. Thanks, Linda. So um, the biggest update, which definitely bears repeating, is that um, we submitted the new test series for the NRS approval. So we are so grateful for all of you who participated. We can't thank you enough for your support. And we were overwhelmed with the creativity and the energy that you folks brought into it and uh, going to different sites and testing folks and uh, remote testing one-on-one -on -one in a break room and just all different kinds of things that were just really great ways. Um, it's quite an accomplishment that we were able to do this at, and during such a difficult time. And uh, since January of 2020, your learners completed nearly 18,000 field tests in 30 states and more than 175 agencies. So um, thank you all again for your support. And um, we hope that those who haven't tried it out yet might give it a go in this next round. So um, why we field test, uh, we're always field testing because we're always updating and improving our assessments. And it's um, really your program's participation ensures that we have relevant tests and that your learners and all adult learners are represented in the research and the resulting assessments. Um, we realize that your programs are busy and a lot of you wear many hats, and we want you to know that we would like to provide you with support should you take on um, field testing. Uh, we have a lot of good documentation to support you. We can provide individualized technical support along with our uh, marvelous tech support team. Um, we ship paper materials that make it easy to return and um, we can uh, help you strategize with planning and looking for testing options. And of course, the gift cards are always a nice incentive for the students. Um, 
field testing does benefit the students because they get an opportunity to practice in the testing environment, which can help them gain confidence and also reduce their anxiety when it comes time for regular progress testing. Um, you can include field testing as instructional time. And an uh, added bonus is that you get to preview new tests and the teachers can use the opportunity to coach their students as they prepare for progress testing. So what we have going on right now is um, that some of you know and others may not, but field testing normally takes place in two phases. We have the item testing phase and then we have final forms. So we are now in the item testing phase for our new reading goal series. And we particularly right now need beginning ABE literacy students. So this is going on now through December. And um, we're hoping maybe you'll consider helping us out. These are uh, very difficult learners to find. Um, some of them are not even attending your programs or have been referred to a literacy program. And oftentimes programs aren't testing students that are this low. But uh, the students will get a, a $20 gift card for each test that they're able to complete. There is no late locator involved with these field tests and they can be taken on e-test or on pencil and paper. And of course, your program can get the complimentary test units as well. Another area that we are um, continuing research and field testing as a result of our um, NRS submission, we would like to bolster the research there. And so we identified in some areas where we would like to strengthen the data set. And so we have learning gain studies that are taking place now through January. These are in all of the modalities of these new uh, series. And we also have some specialized pencil paper field testing available for you. So reach out if you think you can participate. It's pretty easy to get started. Just send us an email and we can provide you with more information and uh, talk about next steps. So thanks so much. And I hope to hear from you. And I'll pass it back over to Janice. Thank you, Karen. I want to say thank you also to the agencies that volunteered for the first part of our new CASAS writing test, uh, the essay pilot. They are underway and we will be giving you an update hopefully in December on how that goes. Today I wanted to highlight the complimentary te uh, test called the language test. It's aimed at the same group of students which are ESL high, intermediate, and above, and reading goals level three and above. This is a very short test, 20 questions, multiple choice, 20 minutes, and it's looking at sentence completion and grammatical constructs. It's scored um, within e-tests. It's also keeping copies in a personal score report in TOPS Pro Enterprise. You can access it within e-tests or you can bring it up uh, later with the view PSR button. Let's look at the next slide, which is the sample output, which I think is very detailed. It goes into the nouns and pronouns, the verbs, the phrases, and the punctuation, and it gives scores based on how the student performed. Up at the top, the total, it says of the 20 questions, the raw score was, let's say 10 questions correct. And it shows which CCR language level that student would place in based on the results of their test. We have some uh, early documentation available. The website is posted there. And we look forward to any agencies reaching out to us. Again, field testing at costless.org if you'd be interested in piloting the language test. All right, thank you. Now let's go on to our next segment. We would like to talk a little bit about digital equity. It's something near and dear to my heart because you, you think about the state of California and it seems so big and we're all in cities and it's so easy to just turn on your phone or hook up to Wi-Fi. But throughout our country, there are large swaths of areas where there is no connectivity. It affects our students, it affects their ability to learn. So we applaud what the national government is doing, next slide please, that the Digital Equity Act. Now, this is a mammoth amount of funding, which is looking at digital skills training, online accessibility, and empowering rural communities to get connected. The digitalequityact.org is a great website. I encourage agencies to connect, to look there, to Google it and find out more because these grants are aimed at agencies. I, I just think that adult ed is a fabulous plug-in to this kind of funding. It's going to be, it's kind of stair-step the way that the monies are being dispersed. And uh, next slide, please. 
what I think of when I think of grants, when I think of applying for a grant, the first thing that comes to mind is how can I support what I need? And the best way to do that is to gather data. Data California has a sample uh, uh, student survey that's been mandated since 2020. All incoming students are required to take this survey. And it asks very basic questions about, do you have a phone do you, you know, that you can connect to class with? Do you have a laptop or a computer? And it helps agencies identify areas of need. You can click on that intake survey and take a peek at what the sample questions are. And I think one of the biggest benefits is that state of California, California Department of Education, gathers all the statistics, posts it publicly, and then you can sort of slice and dice the data to support your grant proposal. Just some food for thought for you on that. And we actually have a poll kind of to ask because we have over 30 different states that registered for this training today. We welcome you. And we're curious about what you are doing in your agencies as far as things like laptops or mobile hotspots. Do you have a loaner program? So Karen's gonna explain how this poll works in case it's not something that's familiar to you and we will get underway. Karen? Okay, so when, you, uh, when we launched the poll, you will answer your response directly on your screen. Next, you will submit your answers at the bottom, and then we will share the results after we close the poll, after we end the poll. Once we have reviewed the results, you will want to close the poll on your screen by clicking that X at the top right uh, of your poll window. So I'm going to launch the poll now. Thanks, Karen. So we're looking, does your agency currently have a device loaner program, laptops or mobile hotspots. So it could be yes, could be not yet, no plans currently or not sure. And I see the responses coming in, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm gonna watch these numbers for a few more seconds until we hit about maybe 75% response. Excellent. Good, good, good. Okay, I think everyone's answered. Karen, can you end the poll and display the results, please? So there you have it. 62% uh, have some sort of a device learner program. That means it's funded. That means you have to figure out how you're gonna maintain that device, whether you have to do software updates or Windows updates, how you're gonna handle all the different ways that things get lost or they might need to be replaced. Excellent. Well. I hope that we can talk more about this in coming webinars because I think it's an area to definitely pursue further. Okay, thank you for sharing that poll with us. Next, I would like to welcome Mr. Kim Jones from Oakland Adult and Career Center. They're celebrating a very unique anniversary and he's got some slides to share with photos. And also I asked him to share his vision for the coming decade, which focuses on student services. Mr. Kim Jones. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Janice. Um, I see some familiar faces in here or names, so um, it's always good to see you guys. Yeah, we, um, very fortunate, um, we celebrated 150 years uh, on October 1st uh, at Liberation Park. We can go to the pictures. There are some pictures, um, some photos, and so we wanted part of it was to get the families out we thought we'd get the kids out we get the families out so these uh this band you're looking at is some high school jazz musicians from various high schools around oakland that are either seniors or recently graduated so that was a lot of fun um they perform all over for us uh they're called the the oakland east all-stars um very good band and so we we just did a lot for the community in terms of we're really trying to change the narrative about adult ed and kind of what we're about. You know, adult ed is not just uh, ESL and high school diplomas, right? And so we wanted to, to get the community out and share with them. There's, uh, can you go to the next slide? Um, and so we had some of our partners come out. We had some, uh, some employers come out that were accepting applications and talking to folks and interviewing folks about uh, jobs and, and job training. Um, we had some of our uh, 
local, uh, like we had BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, um, come out and now uh, we're actually trying to work with them to develop um, some form of a, a entry level um, skills training for them because they have many, many jobs that they're that they're hiring for right now. So that was all fun. And of course, you see the ponies there. We have the pony rides. Um, we had the pony rides for the for the kids and the families really enjoyed that. And if you look, you see this Liberation Park. Um, that's the space where we had this, and it was important for us to do it there. It's in a zone, it's called a Black Cultural Zone, and in that zone, it's uh, just maybe a mile or two um, from one neighborhood to the San Leandro border in East Oakland, and, you know, it's the biggest need in Oakland, it's, it's, it's in East Oakland, and we've been really trying to make uh, you know, trying to really get in there and engage with with that community. So this was a great way to to start that. Um, and also, if you see the the photo, this Liberation Park, this space is going to be reimagined into affordable housing and uh, a marketplace with community service and education services. Uh, all in one spot. So we we are, are hoping to be a part of that and have some of our students um, part of uh, a training program. We have our different training programs that they would be active in this. So we enjoyed having, you know, all the fun for the 150th. I don't know what we would do if I'm around for the 200th, but, <laughs> but, uh, but definitely we had a lot of fun. And, and again, uh, our, our objective there was to engage in this community. And that's why we had all the, the different things for kids. Um, we figured if we get the kids out, we get the parents out um, and, and, and it worked well for us. So we were really, really, really glad about that. We can go to the next slide. Um, and it's just more, more people having fun. That's some, some of our partners and some little ones there. Um, yeah, because we have roller skating. The kids got a chance to roller skate face painting, we had cotton candy and popcorn and all the fun stuff that, that people enjoy. So yes, yeah, so we can, and, um, so yeah, it was, it was just really nice. We had some student speakers. We had one, one of our student speakers, I was really proud. Um, she just received her citizenship a week earlier. And so it was fresh um, and really nice to have her come up and speak. To the, to the crowd, um, they received her well. It was it was really nice. And one of our students um, who spoke was he came to us uh, as for Spanish GED, uh, and he completed his GED. He struggled. He completed his GED, and he's still with us now in our ESL classes. And he's working his way through our ESL classes with uh, Rodolfo. And we're just really excited. That's that's actually him in that photo. You can't see his face, but he's actually in the next room right now shooting a video that we're going to use for outreach and marketing. So um, we 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 love Rudolfo. He's he's our he's our always uh, face. Uh, he's he's awesome. So yeah. Next slide. Oh, there's more kids doing bubbles, and you see in the background that's our mobile classroom. That's a, a big RV that we use for a classroom. And we take that to three different sites each year. And we run uh, family literacy classes, uh, but they're, 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 the curriculum is about digital literacy. So it's more about using uh, technology, using websites and, and, and different forms of communication to help get your kid through school. So, um, and to engage with your child's school community. So um, we're, the, the bus is really a big hit. Uh, I think we have 11, it can, it can uh, accommodate 11 students at once. Um, and so we take that again to three different sites each year and hold about two classes a day on it. So we, we and the bus was, you know, of course during COVID it was out of, out of commission. So we're just getting it back going. So we're really glad that, that that's happening. Oh, there's more people having fun skating. That's actually my little niece there. So <laughs> she's having fun. And so as Janice mentioned, uh, our first 150 years were spectacular. 
you know, some of us has been around long enough to see all the ups and downs and challenges in adult ed, particularly in places like Oakland, where it's really needed. And um, the resources were uh, pretty much cut back to nothing. So we're trying to rebuild. And, and one of the ways we think we do that is by focusing on student services. Um, go to the next slide, but really focusing on some outcomes that can keep students engaged and, and, and motivated. Um, so we, we try to make sure that at our registration, during our registration process, all students are aware of the different services that we have to offer. Um, they're, you know, we keep them informed uh, about, um, you know, when we have different workshops, for example, uh, when COVID first hit, like I guess the first two years, last year and the year before, one of the things we did was we had workshops for technology with the teachers to get the teachers up to speed and so that they felt comfortable with online instruction and those things. But also for our students, you know, we say, hey, we want to give them technology and, and make sure they have hotspots and this, that, and the other, but can they use it? Right? Are we giving them or are, are we giving them a stick shift and they don't know how to drive a stick yet? Right. So we had workshops that we did and we invited our translators so that we were able to do basic computer skill workshops in Arabic, in Chinese, in Spanish and in English. And, and that really helped our students um, get familiar with how to come in and out of the classes, how to use Google Classroom or Zoom or some of the other resources that we had available for them. So that's just one example of how we um, wanna make sure that all of our, our students know about all of our services. The other thing is um, career planning for students and making sure, you know, that, the, that we're preparing learners for lifelong learning um, and productive employment. It's one thing to prepare them and get them an entry-level job or some local company is hiring, but we're trying to take it a step further um, by offering uh, the skills training along with coaching or mentoring. And so we've linked up with other agencies um, to help, you know, kind of navigate with the, the students and with the, the employers to make sure that everybody knows what the expectations are and, 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 and the deliverables. But um, yeah, and for this one, I think everybody's familiar with this. If we don't know where they are, we certainly can't get them to where they're going. And so we have to have some really good, uh, and it's always something, you know, it's always a work in, uh, of, of in progress, um, but making sure that we're placing our students correctly and not just with, with CASAs, but also with, with their career goals or with some of their personal things that they want to get out of school and out of their careers. Um, and sometimes, you know, we, we, we do our CASAs test and we say, hey, this student is, you know, this student goes into to beginning high, right? And we put them in a class and let them matriculate. But I think it's more important that we start to look at the student as a whole and, and do more to identify exactly what that particular student needs with individual learning plans, um, more career assessments, not just you know your, your basic stuff. So um, yeah, we're doing that. And we are developing and have developed some pretty cool programs, thanks to Bankworks. If you guys are not familiar with Bankworks, then you should get familiar with Bankworks. It's a national program and we do this program with uh, Fremont Adult. We actually partner with another adult school in the area, and uh, we share that we share a teacher and 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 space and all that. But we put this Bankworks program at Laney College. We're co-located at, at one of our community colleges, and it's an eight-week program. Um, the students go for eight weeks, 
And after one year, I think 75% of our students are still working at banks. Um, they, they, the banks come in and, and basically uh, they do mock interviews. We have a dress for success program. So we make sure that everybody has proper attire and um, they get the entry level uh, banking skills and some come with a you know, different skill set. So they don't necessarily come in as say a teller, they come in as a banker or some other position, which can be a pretty decent income for, for our students. And the other thing we're doing is developing um, the pre-apprenticeships. We're doing it for flooring. We actually have one for, uh, you see at the bottom here, cybersecurity and, and IT professionals. We actually have a, a apprenticeship for that um, in conjunction with uh, City College of San Francisco um, and uh, IT Biz, which is a community organization that works with uh, human human traffic victims. So we've been working well with them, but we the pre-apprenticeships um, that we're developing, we're hoping for construction, of course, but we're start, we're trying to look outside of construction because that's not the only place you can get pre-apprenticeships, right, or apprenticeships. So we're looking outside of construction into some other fields, um, and it's you know we we're, we're making some some headway there. Project management is part of our uh, IT um, professionals. Uh, we have a skills training program again with uh, with uh, Love Never Fails IT Biz. And these students get, they get certificates along the way. They get the micro certificates along the way, uh, prevailing wedge, wage, wages. We, we, you know, it's expensive to live here in, in the Bay Area. In fact, I believe that Berkeley, uh, I think their minimum wage in Berkeley just went up to like 17 or $18. Um, and that's minimum wage. Uh, it's, it's, it's really difficult. So we're trying to get students into the 20 and $30 an hour jobs. And, and so it's, it's working and lots of OJT. That's the, that's what people need. Uh, the, the on the job training is to stabilize people. They, they need the job skill. They need the job. They need the training. Uh, we, we should pay them while they're training. Uh, and here, no need to tell anyone in this room that we need additional dollars, right? <laughs> in order to do all of this stuff. So we are constantly looking, uh, the ETPLs, the eligible, eligible training uh, provider list for the state of California, um, that allows us to work, uh, to engage with employers because there's some employer incentives uh, to hire our people through these programs. Um, they generate additional WIO dollars for us. Uh, and so we, we're, we're really working hard. We have one of our programs on that list now, and we're going to be working hard to get some others there. Of course, we're, we're doing whatever we can to get local grant funding. We have, I think, three grants out there right now waiting to hear about um, to the tune of about $2 million. Um, we really are trying to make sure that, you know, that our CAPE funding and our WIOA dollars can go a little further by supplementing them with uh, additional resources. So um, we're, we're, we're recently partnered with um, ICEV, which is an online CTE platform, and their programs are all Pell Grant compliant. So we're working to, uh, to make that leap it's, it's, uh, it's something new for OACE. Um, and so this is something leading into the future for us that we're, we're trying to make that leap into to Pell Grant and those additional funding. So that's um, sort of where we, where we are and where are we going? You know, we, we have a saying at OACE, it's like, where are we? Where do we wanna be? And how are we gonna get there? And so that's what we just explained right there. So. Uh, if you guys have any questions, put them in the Q&A. Um, Janice has my email, and thank you for having me. Kim, thank you so much for sharing your vision for your agency. O uh, OASIS is doing such amazing things. I know it's because you've dug in deep and found that additional funding and also just your, your compassion for your students. 
the way that you reach out to them in all areas of need. And that's what brings them in and keeps them there. Thank you so much for sharing. We really appreciate your- Thank you for having me. Uh, excellent. Martha Perez is here to join us from Casa Tech Support. She, we, we routinely go around the horn and say, what are the most common questions that are coming into tech support these days? And Martha suggested sharing a little bit about e-test testing sessions. Um, if you're new to CASAS, hopefully this will provide you an overview and some of the introduction to our vocabulary and the user interface. And if you're an experienced user, I predict you will also pick up a couple of good new tips that maybe you weren't aware of before now. Martha. Thank you so much, Janice. So let's talk about testing sessions and the best practices that we recommend. As you can see in the slide right now, we have a list of testing sessions. We have a few bullet points that are marking out the different testing sessions or in, per instructional program and the different testing series that we use depending on the program that you have at your agency. ABE and ASE, as you can see, they are using the reading goals and the math goals, which are the current approved ones for, for that particular program for ABE, ASE, and they are approved by the NRS. The citizenship, you can read them right here, um, but not a lot of agencies use citizenship. If you do, you can you know, contact us about that. We're gonna talk about the ABE, ASC, and ESL mostly today. And in the ESL program, you can see the Life and Work Reading and the Life and Work Listening 980 series, which are the current ones for this current program year. They have hyperlinks in case you'd like to look into more detailed information from our website about our testing series. Now, this is a screenshot of what the math goals testing session looks like from the e-test side. As you can see, some of these, um, there are some filters it indicated with an arrow right there that you can filter through for the different templates that we have. So CASAS has built specifically uh, some testing sessions and testing session templates according to, based on the best practices and according to your different students' needs. So we normally provide these testing sessions for every agency, especially brand new agencies that have never used e-tests online. We provide you with a list of standardized testing sessions, just like the one you see in, in your screen right now. And we um, can also, if you are an agency that has not been using e-tests online for because of the pandemic or something else, and we're just starting back on to use e-tests online, please do not hesitate to call us and we can provide you with a list of standardized testing sessions like these ones. So we're going to go over and explaining each one of them. This is what, this is a screenshot of what the testing session looks like from the edit window. If you click on edit for a testing session, it will show you the modalities under the session configuration. As you can see, reading and math goals are active right there, and they have a default locator. And we also have other buttons, like other tabs next to the modalities one, which includes options, registration, data, layout, and admin. Right now, we don't have screenshots of all what it's contained inside, but I'm going to briefly describe them. And I highly encourage you to visit our Rolling Hills database so you can take a look at all the settings that we have in there. Next. So again, this is another screenshot of what the ESL uh, program uses, which is reading life and work and math, uh, listening life and work 980 series. Next screen. So this is what I would like to focus today. Uh, we have different testing sessions like you saw earlier, a list of a lot of testing sessions per each program but they are strictly designed to assess your students accordingly, depending on each student situation. So we have intake pretest sessions, which are designed for new students. They welcome new students by just entering their student ID. They don't necessarily need to be entered ahead of time in TOPS Pro Enterprise. So these are very good sessions for you to use for new students who have never been tested before. You can collect demographic information. They are aligned to the recommended CASAS intake process, which means that there's a link in there as well that you can download on your own PowerPoint. Um, this 
aligns to the CASAS intake process, which allows you to verify information from students in case students are a little lower than the level A. We have some intake sessions that are designed specifically to give out just a level A assessment without locators or a beginning literacy form. Then this session also collects demographic information, and this can eliminate processing or scanning entry records. We also have progress post-test sessions, which are designed to administer a progress post-test based on the student's previous score. So it is necessary for the student to log in with their unique student ID number. And that way the student will rec get recognized by the system as themselves as it retrieves the last student test, uh, test results and will assign them the next appropriate level test. And they are designed specifically to lock the creation of new students. So if the student provides a wrong student ID based on a typo or something, they won't be allowed to enter and they can alert the proctor so they can try to re-log them in with their correct ID number. We have another retest session called retest session exactly. Sometimes students uh, get a result with an asterisk showing at the end or a little diamond score, which means that the student has probably tested at a an outside of the accurate range score. And this using this testing session can allow you to retest the student on the same day or on a different day. Next slide, please. So we also have returning sessions, and these returning sessions are recommended when the student has been absent from instruction for a very long period of time. Sometimes it could be 90 days, depending on the state you are at, or 120 days. But if the student has been absent from school that long, we recommend you to give them a returning session. That way, this testing session will enforce a new locator or an appraisal, depending on what you normally use, usually is just a locator. They'll reinforce their, um, they will take another locator so they can know exactly which level they're at when they return after being absent for so long. We also have a registration session, which separates the student registration process from the intake process uh, by just allowing them to provide, if you have enough time at the lab and the student has time to come in, like free time, they can come in and use this testing session to allow them to provide their demographic information, get registered with a program enrollment, and then uh, you can also have them collect the demographic information. And you can also manage these from the testing session templates. You can manage how many data collection screens you would like to collect. And you can also see the link, the hyperlink there in that paragraph. We also have a practice session, which again, when students are free, they have a little bit of time and the lab is a little bit it's available. You can come them, come have them come in, sit down in front of a computer, take a practice test. Nothing, no WTUs will be consumed. So it is great for them if you have time to schedule practice test sessions. So you can have them uh, situated in the computer and kind of realize how they can, you know, go to the next question and skip, and they can, you know, grab onto the mouse and have that testing feeling without consuming web test units. And finally, on this other slide, we have some special accommodations testing sessions for ABE and for ESL learners. As you can see, they're highlighted with red boxes in here that we provide with double time, time and a half, and untimed for those students who uh, have some special needs and they have some, you know, a government uh, letter or from the doctors and they need uh, to have some accommodations and having additional time, we have them available. If you don't have any of these available and would like to have some, please feel free to email us at tech support at casas.org. And we leave you like a special link right here for some special accommodations for guidelines for testing sessions. So that's all on my part. And now we're going to hear a training update from Christine. Thanks, Martha. I'm Christine Maines and part of training here at CASAS. 
Uh, today we'll briefly review some of the commonly asked questions that we receive on a daily basis. So things like where you can find help docs and videos, what live training is being offered, if you prefer that, and um, what online training is available or required uh, based on your roles and responsibilities. So many people ask, where can I find? Um, we receive daily calls and emails, and we are always happy to answer those questions about how do I or where can I find. Um, most of these questions um, can be answered by one of our help docs and videos. So we encourage you to explore the training resources that are available to you um, to help you successfully implement CASA C tests or paper tests or manage TOPS Pro, for example. Um, you'll find help docs that range from beginner level questions like what are the specific steps I need to take to proctor on testing day. We have two help documents for both paper and e-tests for that. You may also um, ask, how do I suspend an e-test session if we have a drill in the middle of testing? That's happened to me. Um, how do I use a third-party export wizard? All of those help documents and videos can be found in two predominantly uh, present places um, in a bank of resources. So the CASAS has created quick links located at the top of our online training site as well as a quick link on our homepage. So on the left side, you'll see what's new. That's a section that's located on our CASAS homepage and a quick link to the help docs and videos. You can also access those same help documents and videos on our training homepage. Simply scroll down to the section that says help docs and videos and click on the link to enter. If you have questions and you can't find something, please email training at casas.org, and we are always happy to help. Live facilitated training is also offered periodically. Um, some folks may not know that. Um, some of you have participated, and we uh, appreciate you coming to get certified or recertified. Or maybe you just like learning with other people and having dialogue. And please feel free to join us for the live training. We are going to be offering an overview of TOPS Pro Enterprise on Thursday, October 27th from 11 a.m. to 1230. Please note that those are Pacific times and adjust accordingly for your time zone. On Thursday, uh, save the date for December 8th, we will be offering another live instructional implementation overview uh, for certification, if you want to certify or recertify, this training is appropriate for ABE and ESL instructors, um, as well as program coordinators who are pulling those reports and supporting CASAS instruction at your agencies. Um, to register for those sessions, you just simply click the live link to live facilitated training, and that'll redirect you uh, to our website where you can uh, register using the links provided. It's important to note that the California agencies um, who are registering for live training should use the California Adult Ed training link. Um, next, please. Yeah, we're listening and we really appreciate your feedback. Um, when you complete your training with CASAS, whether it's online or through a live session, you have an opportunity to tell us what worked and what you still need and how we can improve the training. Please take time to reflect on those questions and let us know what you need. Um, because of your thoughtful feedback, for example, we've created guidance for training based on role and this would allow staff and does allow staff to just really get what they need to know as far as their responsibilities are concerned. So on our online training site, um, if live training isn't available to you at the time you need it, we offer a 24-7 uh, online training that you can start and stop at your own pace. Um, as of July 1st, in this new program year, you've probably noticed that there are some changes at the top of the page if you visited. There are quick links, um, as noted on this slide, to going live. That's the going live checklist for new agencies who are getting started with e-tests. 
as well as the getting ready checklist. Um, most folks don't even know that that's there, so we want to point that out. If you're starting with paper tests or you're going to be adding paper tests, um, please use the getting ready checklist. And we've listened to your feedback, so now we've also provided links um, at the top of the online training page titled Training by Role. And those Training by Role links take you to a guidance chart that shows very clearly what training needs to be completed based on whether you're a new agency or an existing agency and you're adding new staff. Next, we have a um, just an ex a July 1st. That, uh, for this program year, some information about ETES Proctor certification. We get a lot of calls about what's required for ETES Proctor certification. As far as CASAS is concerned, we launched a new ETES Proctor certification for staff who are administering or proctoring ETES. This is the step by step information that you need as an ETES Proctor, including those steps for testing day help docs. And we require ETES Proctor certification so that all TOPS Pro Enterprise Data Managers should have that certification in hand before adding a TE user to the ETES Proctor access group. For new staff at an existing agency, there are two options, ETES Proctor administering tests and also ETES Proctor managing test interruptions. We also uh, next have created a paper test proctor certification. Um, this is a new training that we launched July 1st, 2022. Um, we've created this paper test proctor certification to cover information about the test levels and forms, as well as the quick reference guide, steps for testing day for paper. Uh, we recommend that all paper test proctors review the test administration pro process um, to prepare for those responsibilities, but it uh, is also required for those who will be proctoring paper tests. So if you wanna review the basics about CASAS overall, you can take module one, that's an option for recertification. And you can also, um, like I was as an instructor in Madison Grant, benefit from the instructional implementation module four. You can take these all online or come to the live sessions. So just a quick sum up, we um, have help documentation and video links that are located on both our homepage and our online training site. We do have upcoming live training October 24th for the overview of TE, as well as Thursday, December 8th, we're offering instructional implementation. And again, on online training, we're now offering training by role specifically for ETS Proctor certification and paper test proctor certification. And remember, as always, we are listening. So if you have questions, please contact us at training at casas.org. Thanks so much, Janice. Thanks, Christine. Great training overview. We're going to fly through the last four slides very quickly. We know that we're pretty much out of time. Six times a year, we have the National TE Network Meeting. It's hosted by Jay Wright. If you're interested, I'm going to put a link in the chat so you can see what some of his prior recordings and materials look like. Hopefully you'll get involved. Um, next slide, please. The office hours with CASA staff is something we hold every month, sometimes even twice a month. It's a great chance to sit with usually someone from tech support, someone from the training team, maybe someone from uh, the marketing or administration group, and you can share your ideas, give us suggestions, you can ask questions, and it's sort of like the open mic. So please join us for one of the office hours coming up. We have two closures coming every uh, end of the year. We have Thanksgiving and a winter break. Computers are up this year, no downtime for you, but the phones will be offline. Tech support will be closed. These dates that are posted, a couple days over Thanksgiving and then the week uh, leading up to New Year's. And finally, just a reminder, next month's news and updates, we moved it forward a couple of weeks to December the 7th. That way it'll accommodate a lot of closures. Please sign up for the links and we hope that you will join us. I hope you enjoyed today's sessions. I'm so grateful for Kim Jones for his presentation.
to all my CASAS brethren for their presentations, as well as the people behind the scenes answering questions in the chat. Thank you all for joining us. We're gonna stop uh, the recording now, but we will hang around a little bit longer in case anyone has any one-on-one -on -one questions that you